Hello, welcome to this video where I was supposed to not have, sorry, programming up there, there we go. Um, this video where we're going to have a look at how to kind of stop you rolling backwards or doing like a loop to loop forwards if you're a somersault, is it called? Uh, if you've programmed, like I've shown you in the previous two videos, how to program a mouse look um, uh, like a, a personal controller, player controller. Um, so just like a first person shooter or, or, or anything else. So we've coded this together. Well done if you've watched the other videos and you've coded it yourself. So I'm just using a trackpad. Obviously you might be using a mouse um, to look left and right, up and down, all of that. And then I'm just using WSAD or you could use the arrow keys uh, to move around. So we've done all that, but a commenter, oh, I can't remember your name. I'm really sorry. It, rem it started with an A. I'm really sorry, thank you anyway, you were asking, and I posted the solution to the previous video, but this is how to kind of understand it and fine tune it. What if you were looking down and you want to stop about there, you want to kind of clamp the movement about there, and if you look, maybe if I go and stand near the shadow, I've got it working here. And so, we look down, and I try and look down, and then, oh, that went wrong, that's a bit of a bug, so there's a bug in there. <laughs> if I look down, ah, oh, there you go. And it kind of jolts you back upwards like that. So you can't look below that point. And the same up here. So it's like a, a clamping system that I've got on there. So let me show you how, how this works. And maybe we can improve that jolt happening. Because that's not very nice. It'd be nice if you just looked up and then it stuck there. Uh, or stopped there. <laughs> you don't want to be stuck there. And then go down and, and, and you just stop there. Right, so... Let's bring up the code. So this is the iLook code. I'll just show you what that's attached to. Again, if you want to understand how this scene works, it's very simple, um, how I've got all this working. Look at the previous two videos. If I'm good, I'll be able to remember to put those in the description, which I probably won't, so I'm sorry. Um, so here's the iLook script, and it's attached to like a camera and things. <gasps> and a sausage dog has just walked in the room. More importantly, look, have I pointed that? Hello, Milo. Yes, you're a sausage dog, so well done, well done Milo. Well that was a good, that was good wasn't it? Hopefully I pointed the camera in the right direction there. Right, oh I can't get out of the room now. Oh, do you want to stay? Okay, what were we doing? So, yeah go and see the previous videos if you want to know how to get things set up. So, how is the clamp working? It is not much code. Can I find <laughs> where it is? Yes, here it is. Right, I've called it to prevent over-rotation. And so what is important is this kind of line. With this dot transform rotation Euler angles dot X, we're talking about the angle that you're rotating like this. So that's how to access that, that um, not input, but that measurement or whatever. And I'm saying if it's less than 84 but or greater than 275 then basically what this line means is the mouse movement um, or mouse what do I call that mouse what does MD stand for it's just something I've made up Oh, mouse direction there you go mouse direction or mouse movement so it's how much you're kind of trying to look up or down or left or right then add to that the current mouse movement. So last frame, how much did the user move the mouse? That's what MC stand, stands for. So that's all that we had there in the previous video. We just said, whatever, however you move the mouse, don't look at how much you rotated, just add your current movement to the previous movement and then, and that's how we got the mouse, the mouse look thing working. But now we're saying only do that when you're within the allowed range. So if you've gone beyond that, you're not allowed to move. Else, we say, make sure that the um, the mouse movement is jolted um, the opposite amount times 10. So if you're by opposite amount, I'm saying, if you've gone up and you go past that threshold, then it will jolt you in the opposite direction down. So that's why you get that little jolt. And Conversely, if you're moving it down, then it's going to jolt you in the opposite direction, which means up. 
So that stops you from doing this. What if you move the mouse so fast that you went right over like that? And then it only... Um, you would then get stuck kind of looking upwards or something like that. Or it wouldn't work if you used a different method. So what I make sure you do is you get jolted. So if we wanted less of a jolt, then we'd make this times 10 less. But the problem is the smaller you get that number, the easier it is for your user to to go past the threshold. So there should be an easier solution. I mean, this is quite quite a nice solution because it's not much code. So what could we do? Well, let's make the jolt really big to begin with. 100. So you, you just get to see the effect. You know what I'm talking about. Right. So play now. And what we'll do, we'll, I'll move close to a shadow or something so we can see what's going on when I look down. Yeah, I'll go over here. Here we go. I'll look down and we should get jolted quite far upwards. Wow. <laughs> that jolts is like looking to the stars. So the faster I move my mouse, the bigger that jolt's going to be because it it multiplies the amount that you've moved by 10 by the scalar. So, oh, actually, seem to be less the faster I'm moving. Oh, no, that's jolted me yeah, backwards. So anyway, if you've got a big number, you're going to get, and a fast user, you're going to get some strange results. So... In terms of being a solution, this isn't a great solution because you have to get certain factors, variables, numbers right in order for it to work okay. Anyway, um, let's just try, I don't know, three and see if that keeps us within the threshold, within the range that we want, but having less of a jolt because a jolt's not very nice. Then what I need to do is write to like a debug line so you can see where I'm getting those those angles from. I didn't do any math, so I just wrote a debug line to give me what angle I'm currently at. Right, let's go over here again. Oh, so maybe I'll fly up towards the sky and then go down, try and roll, and I can't. And there's just a little bit of a, a jolt. Yeah, what if I try and move really fast and break the system? Oh. And that jolts you up quite stiffly. You know what? It's less of a jolt now. It's more of just a bounce, a light bounce. Which is perfect. So, I'm quite happy with that. We've turned our hacky little solution into something that works quite well. Okay, and I might just report because in six months time... If I go and read this, or you go and read this, because I don't know when you're watching this, it could be in the future, you could have robot legs. Um, so if you read this back, we won't know what that three means, so it's a good idea to comment your code in terms of mysterious things. So I'm going to say multiply by three to... Why did I write three? Let's put three F, and then we know what we're talking about. By three F in order to... Create a little bounce so that user does not rotate beyond threshold. Beyond threshold, that'll do. That kind of explains what we're doing. Okay, ah, here's that debug, debug log, <laughs> debug log, um, which I've commented out. So, what does this mean? Let's just put this onto another line so you can see it. Okay. So debug log, that's what you write in Unity, in C Sharp, Unity C Sharp, in order to get something printed to the um, console, which is down here. So I cl I've got this cleared on play, so it will appear here while we're playing, and we can have a look at it at the end uh, to read what we're getting outputted. So I'm saying, could you print this transform local rotation Euler angles dot x so basically on the x-axis I'm rotating like that I want to know how much or what the angle is as I'm as I'm looking around and then I'm putting a space and then uh, MCY oh MCY is how much the mouse has currently moved so I don't really need that anymore 
So let's just write that. Um, or I could pl plot. I could plot this space um, backwards arrow my rotation smiley face. There we go. And I've got semi coco there. Okay, so everything's okay. Right. Save the code, else Unity won't run it, won't run the current version. And um, press play. So if we look down the bottom, yeah, here we go. Can you see in the green there? We're getting our rotations. So, and our smiley face, more importantly. So if I look down, we're currently at 29 degrees. Let's just call it degrees or Euler angles. There we go. 40. So what if we wanted to keep it, clamp it between, let's say, well, let's say 42 for Douglas Adams. I saw Douglas Adams' grave in Highgate Cemetery the other day, which was, it's not nice, I guess, but it was, um, he was a very, very good author and probably a lovely man. Probably a lovely man. Anyway, so in honour of Douglas Adams, we'll stop it, we'll clamp it at 42 degrees. And if we look up, so it looks like we hit zero degrees when we're looking just horizontally and then it goes backwards from 360. So what's 360 minus 42? I don't know the answer. You probably do because you're cleverer than me. But you don't have to do maths if you're programming or coding because we can just make the computer do it. So I can say if we're less than 42 but we're greater than, now let's get the computer to do the maths, 360 minus 42. Don't do maths. Oh no, can I write F though? <laughs> there we go. You write F as like a suffix um, to numbers just to tell the computer you want to use them as floating points, not double uh, pointed numbers um, to save on memory and things. Right. Okay, let's let's see if that happens. So now we should have clamped our rotation to like a tiny letterbox kind of field. Right. There we go. So I can't look beneath 42 degrees and I can't look above 360 minus 42. Oh, and now we've turned upside down. Brilliant. So... <laughs> So it's so narrow, I think our bouncing, hacky bouncing and jolting is jolting us out of the, the range that we want to be in. Okay, so what I think I've given you is enough understanding of how to access the data in terms of the rotation and a method, a hacky little method of controlling where you're, what effect that rotation is having from the mouse movement. I think I've given you enough understanding there to, to make a much better mechanism. Crucially, you don't. The crucial things you want to look out for is if the user has moved their mouse so much that you're thrown into the, the area you don't want them to get to. You want to move them back to exactly like kind of the maximum they can look up, and do that just smoothly. That's what you want to create, and you don't want to have any of this bouncing nonsense. Okay. Thank you very much for watching this video. I haven't made one in ages. Feels nice. I think we've got like 200 subscribers at this point. It's quite nice. And you saw a dog. Well, I tried to show you a dog. So, hope you enjoyed him. His name's Milo. Um, goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for watching.